This is Russ Burlingame, and I'm here today with Tony Isabella. He is the creator of Black Lightning, and as we were just talking about, the character, not the television show. That's true. That's true. I created Black Lightning in 1976. Uh, Salim and Mar Brock Akeel uh, created the TV show in 2017. And while there's a lot of me in the show, uh, creating a comic book is, is nowhere the same as creating a TV show. So please stop sending him resumes. Uh, so one thing I, I wanted to talk to you about, I, I know this is well on the record, but I've never spoken to you about it, is the original genesis point for Black Lightning. Because originally it was a terrible, terrible idea. DC Comics, I had I'd come over to DC Comics and they wanted me to write a character called the Black Bomber. Uh, they had, had two scripts written and paid for of this character. He was a white racist who took part in chemical camouflage experiments in Vietnam to help him blend into the jungle better. Uh, this is the point where people usually start disbelieving me, but I swear to God it's true. Uh, nothing happens in Vietnam when he comes back to the United States. In moments of stress, not every moment of stress, he turns into a black superhero. He does not know he does this. His black superhero identity does not know he d does this. Each identity has a girlfriend. They've witnessed the transformation and somehow never thought to bring it up. I'm sorry, if my significant other undergoes a change like that, I'm at least going to ask a question. In his white racist identity, in both of these two scripts that were done, he rescues someone he can't see clearly. And it turns out to be a black person, and he's horrified that he risked his life to save a black person, including a baby in a baby carriage. And he actually says in the script, you mean I risked my life for a jungle bunny. Just to put the cherry on top of this shit Sunday, his uniform was a basketball uniform, basically. So DC Comics asked me to punch up these two scripts and then take over the book with the third issue. I say no. And they go, what do you mean? You cannot publish this comic book. This is the most offensive comic book scripts I have ever read. You can't publish them. What do you mean we paid for them? No, people will come to your offices with pitchforks and torches. And they go, how could you know that? I said, I will be leading them. <laughs> so this went on for a couple of weeks. And finally, I had to boil down the argument to one question. Do you really want your first major black superhero to be a white racist? And it kind of went, oh. So they said, okay, we'll give you a couple of weeks to create your own character. And that's how I started on the path of creating Jefferson Pierce. And obviously, uh, one of the nice things about the kind of post-rebirth DC regime is that they've been bringing folks like yourself and Marv Wolfman back to some of these characters. Uh, is it kind of a, a trippy experience getting to write Jefferson again in kind of the oh. post-TV? Well, the, the nice thing about it is that when I asked them which Jefferson they wanted me to write, they said I could do whatever I wanted. So I basically threw out 40 years of continuity and did a reboot. It's, it's not a hard reboot. We don't give in, go into his new origin. But he's a younger Jefferson Pearson we've ever seen before. He's smarter. He's not married yet. I love his daughters, but since he's not married yet, they're his cousins in the comic book. Uh, it's very edgy. I was amazed at how far DC let me go with covering um, contemporary issues. And it's set in my hometown of Cleveland, which has been great fun. That's an interesting distinction, too, because obviously uh, DC typically sets things in kind of imaginary cities. So you can do things like blow up Coast City and nobody in L.A. says, hey, wait, I didn't die. Uh, what, was that an argument at all with DC? No, D I tell you, DC has uh, never questioned what I wanted to do. Uh, they always backed me. They didn't flinch. Uh, now, some of the stuff I did myself, for example, uh, if I have a real-life Cleveland building taking p is part of the action, I changed the name of it. Um, the climactic battle between Tobias Whale and Black Lightning takes place in, in real life Cleveland, it would have been the abandoned Coast Guard station on Whiskey Island. Now it's the abandoned uh, Coast Guard station on Scotch Island. So they're close. People from Cleveland know what they are. Uh, the artist used the Old Stone Church in downtown Cleveland as a reference for Black Lightning's church. 
but we, you know, we did not call it the Old Stone Church in the comic book. So that's the kind of distinctions I'd make. I realized late in the game that just because a building no longer exists in real life Cleveland doesn't mean it can't exist in the DC version. And there were these lovely Art Deco buildings in downtown Cleveland when I was growing up. And if I do more Black Lightning stories, you'll see those buildings. They'll be back. One of the things you said early on uh, that a lot of you is in the television show. Uh, is there anything, because now that you've had a chance to kind of re-look at the origins through a new lens, is there anything either from your old stuff or from the new that you're like, I really hope this eventually gets to the show? Um, well, I know that in one of the early versions of the script, the crucifixion scene from the very first Black Lightning comic where a high school student was strung up on a basketball court, I know that that was in one of the versions of, of the earliest versions of the scripts, and that didn't make it in, which amazed me that I was able to put that in a comic book in 1977, and yet they couldn't put it on screen in 2017. Um, no, I really want to show to pretty much, you know, we, we both work from the same core values, and as long as they do that, uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to remain happy with the show. The show has, I know I've influenced the show. Uh, the show has influenced me. Um, Lynn Stewart in the comic book is British because Christine Adams has the greatest natural British accent ever. Um, now, Tobias Whale is black and not an albino. Well, he was, he's still black in the comic book, but he was an albino. He's not an albino in the new comic book series because I got tired of every albino being a villain in comics. But I have promised Croydon that I will create and have created a new albino superhero. It's just a question of if I do more Black Lightning stories, he'll appear there. If not, I'll use him somewhere else.